Welcome back. As we mentioned earlier, the White House says President Biden is reevaluating the U.S.'s relationship with Saudi Arabia after it announced plans to cut oil production. And joining me now is John Kirby, the coordinator for strategic communications at the National Security Council. Uh, John, I appreciate your being with us. You said earlier today that President Biden is reevaluating that relationship with the Saudis. What factors go into that decision? Well, first, I want to apologize for being late, Peter. Poor time management on my part. I wish you got I had other things excuse. to do. We get I, it. I, did, I, didn't, I didn't do it right today, so I apologize. Uh, the president believes, certainly in the wake of the OPEC decision here, that, uh, and, and actually, he, frankly, from the beginning of the administration, uh, he felt that the relationship with Saudi Arabia, while important, and it still is important, uh, should probably be, be, be reevaluated. Certainly in the wake of this OPEC decision, um, he's more convinced of that now. And so we are going to review the status of this bilateral relationship, and we want to make sure the president's primary concern is to make any bilateral relationship is working to our national interest and, and advancing our national security. And he just wants to make sure that that's where things are with Saudi Arabia going forward. So let me try to drill down on that. Is freezing all aspects of the U.S.'s relationship with the Saudis on the table? I'm not going to get ahead of the president here. He hasn't made any decisions at all, at all, except to say that he wants to take a look at the, the relationship. But I, I won't get ahead of what, what, uh, what that might look like going forward. He wants to talk to members of Congress, and he's going to uh, obviously give them time to get back to town. But, but he knows that there's many members of Congress who likewise share some concerns about this relationship. He wants to have time to consult with them as well. At the risk of you repeating that answer, Senator Richard Blumenthal and Congressman Ro Khanna, among those Congress members, they introduced legislation together today that would halt all arms sales to the Saudis. Is that a more viable option? Is that something, not getting ahead of it though, something certainly to this point that has been among those that you would consider? I think the president wants to take a fresh look and, and, uh, and again, review this bilateral relationship, make sure that it's working to our national security interests. We also need to re remind ourselves that 70,000 plus Americans live and work in Saudi Arabia. Right. Uh, they too are facing the threat from these, these, uh, these uh, Houthi launched uh, missile, uh, att missile and drone attacks into Saudi Arabia. There are American businesses who are based in Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is still a strategic partner of the United States and has been for 80 years. So I think whatever we we end up doing yeah. here. The president wants to take a balanced approach. As we witnessed when we traveled with the president to Saudi Arabia over the summer, I want to ask about Russia now. The foreign minister there, Sergei Lavrov, said today that Vladimir Putin would be open to meeting with President Biden at the G20 meeting next month. Would President Biden rule that out? The president has uh, answered this question himself. He said it remains to be seen, and I think that's exactly where he is right now. Uh, he hasn't committed to, to a meeting with uh, Vladimir Putin. I think he's going to, uh, to, to, to think about this in his own time. Uh, right now, the president believes this is not the time for business as usual with, with Russia, with Mr. Putin. Given what they've done inside Ukraine, uh, he does not believe normal uh, is, is, the right, is, is the right approach. To be clear, in the past, he said Vladimir Putin shouldn't even be included at the G20. Uh, again, I, I, uh, I, he's been very clear about uh, where Mr. 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 Putin should sit uh, and stand yeah. on the world stage. I won't get ahead of where we go, where things are going with the G20. The president said it remains to be seen, and I, I think that's I think that's where we are. The president today, in a new interview with CNN, said of Vladimir Putin that he quote totally miscalculated by invading Ukraine, but he also went on to say that he believes he is a rational actor. Does his being a rational actor, in at least the president's assessment. Does that mean that he's less likely to use tactical nuclear weapons? Is that the president's words or is that an intelligence community assessment that he is a, quote, rational actor here? I, I think it's both. Um, uh, I, I think you, you just look at how Mr. Putin has, has behaved since before the invasion. Yeah, these were this was a strategic mistake. He should never have done this. He certainly did not expect the kind of resistance that he was going to get from the Ukrainian armed forces, and he certainly didn't expect the resolve and the unity in the international community to push back on him and to hold him accountable. Now, on the nuclear question, uh, and, this, and the president's right. I mean, the, the, you know, we believe that he's a rational thinker here. Uh, we have not seen, and we're monitoring it as best we can, Peter, we've not seen any indication uh, that Mr. Putin has made a decision to move towards the use of weapons of mass destruction or nuclear weapons. We haven't seen his military uh, conduct any moves that would lead us to believe that they're even preparing for that kind of a uh, of an outcome. And the last thing I'll say is, and we're watching this again as closely as we can, we haven't seen anything that's caused us to want to change our own strategic nuclear yeah. deterrent posture. 
I want to ask you about what we did here from President Zelensky. He asked for additional air defense systems from yeah. G7 nations, including the U.S. Notably, the U.S. just announced it's sending two what they call NASAMs. These are sort of mid-range air defense right. systems. Why not send more, given that new bombardment that you just saw? I would note that we've been sending air defense capabilities since the very beginning of this war when we were talking about Stingers, which are short-range air defense systems. Back in the spring when we helped Slovakia arrange to get their S-300, which is a long-range Soviet, old Soviet system, in into Ukraine. And now, of course, we're working on procuring these NASAMs, these, these uh, surface-to-air missile systems, which are short to mid-range. You're, you're right about that. Uh, and we're open to exploring additional air defense capabilities. The Secretary Austin, Secretary of Defense, will be meeting with uh, our allies and partners in Europe here this week uh, at another contact group. I'm sure that the issue of air defense will be coming up. There are other nations who have other air defense capabilities that the Ukrainians are more familiar with that they could also, uh, we could maybe help uh, get into the country. So there's a lot of options here on the table. We're going to continue to look at this going forward because we know it's a real, it's a real military requirement. John, one last thought I want to get in with you is Bill Richardson. You know, he said over the weekend that he's, quote, cautiously opt optimistic that a deal will be reached by the end of this year to secure the release of Brittany Griner and Paul Whelan, of course, being held right now in Russia. The U.S. says they're wrongfully detained there. I know the administration has made clear that private citizens like Richardson, that their involvement could, quote, hinder efforts. But is the administration optimistic, especially in the light uh, in light of this new violence? What we are is confident that we are serious about getting these two individuals home. Um, and we are working very hard to bring that about. We have made a very serious proposal and laid that on the table for the Russians, and we urge them to take that because it will help uh, get these two individuals, Ms. Greiner and Mr. Whalen, home faster. Uh, we're going to keep at it. Uh, the U.S. government speaks for the U.S. government. We're going to keep at it. We're going to uh, maintain uh, contact with uh, Russian officials to try to, to try to bring that about. Do we know that they're both well at this point? Have we had any recent contact? We, we don't have any indication that, that, that they aren't. Um, okay. uh, we, are, we are in as close contact as we can be. Uh, there are some limits to that, as you might imagine, uh, but every indication we have right now is that they are in good health. Good. Uh, but they need to be in good health at home with their families where they belong. John Kirby, we always appreciate you making time for us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Peter. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.